Hey Dave. Hey. Super booth, first time. Yeah, Virgin. It's a rocking place though, isn't it? It really is. It's awesome. So um, you've been working on the uh, the new reactor blocks, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the last couple of years, that's been all I've done. It's a really interesting concept. It's kind of a virtualization of modular into into the box, but there's a lot of other stuff besides, right? Yeah. Well, it's. Uh... I mean, it seems almost like the logical step to go with Reactor, where you know it's modular in its context anyway, and Blocks is just a way of breaking that out to the user to make it much easier to use and really intuitive as well. So, are you involved in kind of creating the, these modules as well? So, yeah, coming up with the, the concepts. Must yeah, be yeah, the design, the development. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a small team of us working on it, so yeah, it's we're all we're all pitching in for the most part. Yeah, it must yeah. be a lot of fun because you can just kind of. Yeah, I mean, we're all massive nerds, so it, yeah, everyone's got a lot of ideas. It doesn't really feel like work for the most part. So what are you showing here? There's some new stuff, right? Yeah, so I mean, uh, we had the initial release in September, and then we did the Christmas stuff, some extra freebies at Christmas, and then our focus this time is kind of on the integration ways that you can use the block stuff with other bits of hardware MIDI enabled or your modular that you might have and you want it to all work together in this kind of hybrid cool setup like that yeah because I mean the hybrid and the interconnectivity is really key I think isn't it well yeah, I think that, I think that's where a lot of people think it's gonna go that was really loud uh, <laughs> yeah just being able to use all your things like rather than having one distinct sort of workplace you want to be able to use everything that you have and make it all play together so what have we got up on the screen here? Um, so, I mean, this is quite a basic one. We're using, um, we've got a few little modules, got an LFO as a clock, a sample and hold to generate some random values, quantize to turn those random values into notes, and then we're sending that out as MIDI into this OP1 down here. So if I bring that up, hang on, I'll turn it down and bring it up like a pro. So then we've got the, uh, and also we've got the audio coming back in from the OP1, and then we can apply some delay and reverb just to make it sound quite pretty. But the idea is basically turning the sort of the virtual CV inside blocks, turning that into MIDI, which is quite, you know, allows us to use any of your MIDI enabled devices that you might have. Right, so the, the, the notion of just sort of integ the integration is, the, is this demonstration of that. So essentially, we're kind of creating a, a CV based. It's a CV to MIDI converter. Right. Uh, and if you have a DC coupled input like the Expert Sequence one, you can actually route signals from your sequencer, your modular sequencer, and convert that into MIDI as well. And then it also send, it's sending pitch and gate, and it's sending CC as well. So it's doing some modulation on here as well. Uh, I think, oh, Wrong button, lost dude. it, that one. So it's actually modulating the blue parameter on the, on the OP1 as well, which right. is giving it a bit of damping. But you know, you get the idea. It's, so, I mean, that's the MIDI stuff. Um, we're also, uh, where is he gone? Uh, yeah, yeah, so we're doing, um, another thing we wanted to talk about was using maybe hardware stuff that you already have. So this is like the Machina Mark II controller. Yeah. And, and you can basically, it's, it's stripped of all its brains and it's just running in complete stupid mode. So like a MIDI controller. Yeah, it's, it's literally the MIDI controller. Um, you press a button and the MIDI gets sent to Reactor, Reactor tells the lights to come on and it all comes back out again. All oh, right, so you've actually got a little uh, machine a sequencer. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, and we've also got a few drum modules here as well. Um, and basically, so if you start it running, it'll give you... Um, I'll start it running. And so that's just like a little 808 drum machine. You've got some kicks and snares and hi-hats. You can do some... All sorts of weird stuff with this. You know. So that's communicating bi directionally the MIDI from here. So exactly. it's telling which lights to go up and all Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it's also doing is uh, we're converting, it's got eight channels, four of which are going to these internal blocks in Reactor, four of which are getting sent out via the expert sleepers module into the modular over there. Uh, so you've got some, drum vo got some drum voices going on here. Yeah, as well. so these are the, the Tip Top 909 modules, which are getting triggered. Fire reactor straight into there. Um, and obviously you can play them all together and you get like a nice big fat beat, uh, which is a lot of fun. So, so 
All right, so essentially it allows you effectively to create your own custom interface onto Machina. Yeah. Is it right? Yeah, so I mean, it, we, we, all of this is going to go into the user library, so hopefully that'll be, it'll, be, it'll help people to be able to use, make similar things for their Machina. Uh, and it's also, as I said, it's a, it's, it's a way of sending clocks, gates, and triggers out to your modular. So you can use that to advance a modular sequencer or sync a LFO or a VCO as well, like it's a whole... Right, so you're using third-party uh, interfacing here to, to, to do this. Yeah, I mean... So my question has got to be, and uh, you can squirm all this, not as much as you like, but there's got to be a, a, a route to name instruments doing some kind of interface for this to work. Yeah, I mean... I think you're right. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I, I do content for Reactor. Uh, there's Reactor as a platform, there's another team that sort of talk about that kind of thing. I personally would love to see some interface stuff. For the moment, we, we, we're using the Expert Sleepers thing, uh, and Oz from Expert Sleepers was nice enough to lend me one. And it's, a, it's an awesome bit of kit. Does, if, you have a, if you have a sound card that'll have a light pipe output, it does everything that you need it to. It's, it's awesome. I'd love to see some, some real native stuff, maybe one day. I guess the thing is the... the the utility of this is the fact that it interfaces, it just bridges the gap effectively. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's that's the aim, is that, I mean, hopefully, you know, Blogs will give you, it will supplement the things that you don't have in your case. It's, it's how I use it, you know. If I need an extra LFO, I'll patch an extra LFO from Blocks. Um, and hopefully they'll start to become, you know, better friends and play together a bit more. Yeah, and that, that makes a lot of sense as well, because control is sort of, less critical in terms of sound quality or whatever, you know, so it, you could... Yeah, I mean, a lot of people won't want to dedicate the HP to an LFO when they could have a nice new filter or an oscillator or something like that. that. That's very true. Um, so we've also got, I mean, the other, I guess the really exciting one is this one. And so, and basically this will allow you to calibrate uh, oscillators in your modular using Reactor and then use the sequences that you have in Reactor to control all of this, so... So it, it will, it will, um sends out the control voltage, then listens to the incoming pitch and adjusts its scaling accordingly, basically. Yeah, it's not just scaling though, it's actually finding the voltage that it needs to send to get a particular note back. So that, you know, once you press a middle C on your keyboard, you'll get a middle C from your oscillator. And can that compensate for, say, oscillators or voices that are a little bit wobbly when it comes to the extreme edges? Yeah, yeah, well? I mean, um, it'll, 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 I mean, it'll do, you know, you can calibrate a filter with it, you can calibrate a cycling envelope with it. Um, I, I had a particularly good day where I got a cycling mass channel and managed to calibrate that for about five octaves, and that doesn't even track volts per octaves at all. Oh, that's really interesting. So, so right. it, it'll figure out the response curve it needs to send to calibrate that thing. So you could repurpose modules that were designed for... Yeah, yeah. Okay, and sure, that... sure, let's have a look at this. So let's, let's run it. So I've just got a basic sine wave coming from the Atlantis at the moment, and so this runs through its calibration routine. Sometimes it takes a little while. So that's sending out voltages and listening back? Yeah. And it gets into the... There we go. Gets quite that high pitch. quite nice. Yeah, yeah. You, chose, you chose some pleasant voice, some pleasant note in the voice. Yeah. So then when you start to run... Uh, if I just run this sequencer, this will go into... This is uh, Intelligent Atlantis, right? It is, yeah. It's an awesome module. But, so you can see it will track the sequence quite quite happily. Um, we've also got. It's odd. It actually sounds more accurate, doesn't it? it? In, in... I mean, I, I haven't got a tuner loaded up to show you, but I mean, it'll, it's within like hundredths of a cent across octaves. It's it's super accurate. It starts to sound soft. It's really peculiar, isn't it? I'm sorry. In, in a way, you, you, know you can always you can always put some some modulation back yeah. in there or scale it so it's out of tune again. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's on, it's slightly unreal. Clean, yeah, very clean. And then there's also some other stuff. There's like a, I'm sending this sample and hold out to modulate the filter a little bit as well, just for a bit of variety. But you get the idea. Basically, it's all just coming out of the Expert Sleepers module. All right. That's really cool. So, um, what sort of power do you need to run this kind of stuff in on Reactor? I mean, is it is it quite? Oh, well, it's CPU wise. Yeah. I mean, it depends what you're using. Obviously, the bigger, the more complex your patch gets, the heavier it gets. And then there are some modules that, are, that will use more CPU than others. Like we've got a dual oscillator. It's like the Buchla style dual oscillator, and that is heavy. But you get a lot of sound for your for your money in that case. But for the simple stuff like pitch calibration, it's yeah. super light. Yeah, really not not much at all. And these new modules and new ensembles are going to be available now, or when are they? We're doing we're doing some sort of last testing because we want to be able to provide. You know, say it's definitely going to work with this setup. 
you know, so if you have this oscillator, yeah, it'll do it. If you have that sound card, it'll do it. Um, maybe next month. And then similar, with it, there's also going to be some stuff that'll go on the user library in a couple months, hopefully, as well. So will these be uh, sort of paid for uh, ensembles or are they going to be? Oh, no, no. I mean, if you have a copy of Reactor, it'll be free to you. Oh, great. And then similar with the user library, if you have a user library account, you can download it. Right, okay, cool. Mike, thanks very much. Oh, thank you.